Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at promises in ES6. Alright, so the promise object is used for deferred and asynchronous computations. And it represents an operation that hasn't completed yet, but is expected in the future. Alright, so let me give you some quick examples here. Let's start with an immediately resolved promise. Okay, so let's do var uh, my promise equals, and we're going to set this to promise dot resolve, and we'll pass in a string of foo. All right, and so now to get a promise, we can use then. Okay, so we'll say my promise dot then, and then in here. We'll have a response, and then we're going to set console.log. Whoops, I don't want that. And response. All right, so if we save that and reload, we get foo. Okay, so we're setting it here, and then we're getting it. So let's do something a little bit tougher. Okay, we're going to set var variable my promise, and we're going to set it to new promise. And inside here, we'll have a function that's going to take in two things. It's going to take resolve and reject. All right, and we're going to say set timeout. And then in here, we're going to just have a, a blank parentheses, and then we're going to say resolve, and we'll pass in four. And then the next parameter is going to be the amount of time for this um, for this uh, interval. So we'll say 2,000, which is 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds. Then down here, we're going to take my promise, and we'll say dot then. And in here, we're going to do the same thing we did up top. We're going to say res, and we'll set it to a code block. And in here, let's take that res, and we'll add 3 to it. So we'll say uh, plus equals 3. And then let's just console.log res. Okay, we'll save it, reload. Wait two seconds, and we get seven. Now, this obviously isn't very helpful. It's just a, a way to show you how they work. Um, let's actually use a promise for something helpful. We'll use it to fetch data from an API. All right, so let's create a function, and we'll call this get data. Okay, we're going to be using Ajax here. This is going to take in two things. It's going to take in a method. And it's going to take in a URL. All right, and then we're going to say return new promise. And in here we'll have our function. And that's going to take in two things. It's going to take in a resolve and a reject. Okay, so let's create a variable here called XHR. And we'll set that to new uh, XML HTTP request. Okay, then we're going to take that XHR object and we're going to call the open method. And then we're going to pass in whatever we pass in for the method and the URL. All right, and then down below it, we're going to say XHR.onload. And that's going to equal a function. Okay, and then what we'll do is check the status that's being returned. So we'll say if this dot status is greater than or equal to 200, which means everything's okay if it's a 200. And if this dot status is less than 300. 
Okay, so if that's true, then we want to resolve. So we'll say resolve, and then let's pass in the response. All right, and then let's do an else right here. And then we're going to reject. Pass in an object that's going to take status, which we'll set to this status. And then also status text, which will be set to xhr dot status text. All right. Now we're going to go down here. Let's put a semicolon there, and then we have to handle our error if there's an error. So xhr dot on error, and that's going to be a function. And we'll say reject. I'm actually going to grab this. We're going to do the same thing. Okay. Then we just want to put a semicolon there, and then we just want to call the send function. So xhr dot send. Okay. So that will handle a request. Now there's a, an API service we can use. Which is JSON placeholder dot typey code dot com. All right, and this allows us to use a third-party API for either posts or comments, albums. Let's do to-dos. All right, so if we click on that, it gives us a resource for to-dos. Okay, they're objects with a user ID. An ID, a title, and completed. So we're going to use that. So let's go down below here, and we're going to call our get data function, and we're going to pass in the method, which is going to be a get request, and then the URL, which is going to be this right here. All right, and then just like we did with the other promises, we're going to say dot then. And then in here we'll have a function. Okay, and that function is going to take in a parameter called data. All right, and then we can just console dot log data. All right, and then down here we can also add on dot catch and pass in a function. And that's going to take a parameter called error, and then we'll just console dot log error. All right, so let's go ahead and save that and go back and reload. Exit XML HTTP request. Oh, the XML has to be all uppercase. All right, it's case sensitive. Reload, and there we go. So now we're fetching all those users. Now, if we wanted to, instead of just console logging it, let's do something with it. We'll get it so that we can display it on the web page. All right. So let's say let to dos equal, and then we're going to put it through JSON dot parse. Okay. We want to put the data in there like that. Okay. So now let's create uh, a variable called output. And that'll represent the, the template or the string that we want to output. And we'll do a for loop here. And this is actually a for of loop, all right,、uh, which is also new to ES6. So what we can do is we'll say for, and then let to do of to dos. Okay, and then in here we're going to take that output variable. And we're going to use plus equals, and we're going to use the template literal like we we went over in a past video. So we're going to use backticks here, and then we can actually use multiple lines. So we'll say、um, let's do div, and in here we'll have an h3. Okay, and then we can actually add in the title. Okay, you can see it has a title 
value. So what we can do is use the dollar sign and then the curly braces and we'll say to do dot title. And then right under it we'll have a paragraph and we'll say completed and then we can do to do dot completed. Okay, so now we'll go outside of the for loop and we're going to say document dot get element by ID and we'll say template dot inner HTML is going to equal the output. All right, actually, you know what I'm going to do is put this in an LI. And then we'll save that. And then let's go to our index HTML page. I'm going to replace hello world. We're going to put a UL here. And then here we can put um, our template class or a template div. No, actually, you know what we're going to do is we're going to give an ID of template. All right, and then that should insert the li tag. So let's reload. And if I take this down, now you can see we're getting all the to do's and we're getting if they're completed or not. OK, so we've used a few different aspects of ES6 in here. We use promises. We use the template string. We use the for of leap uh, loop to iterate through the to do's. Uh, so this is what the future of JavaScript looks like. OK, so that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, I want to get into generators. A generator is basically a function that can be paused and then can be set to uh, to yield values until until it finally returns. All right. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.